So what do you know already? You know that the natural state of an object is not to come to rest, like old people believed. It's actually to keep its velocity. The natural state of objects is to keep, hold tightly whatever velocity they have. Now this stubbornness to hold that velocity is called, we give it a name, it's called inertia. And this knowledge that we have, that whatever velocity you give an object, it'll keep it as long as you don't disturb it, right? It'll keep that velocity forever and ever and ever. This knowledge, we call it the law of inertia or Newton's first law of motion. You know all of this. But when I was taught this, the question that I had in my mind is, this is great. As long as you don't trouble the body, it'll keep its velocity. Sure. Interesting. But I keep seeing in the real world that objects do change their velocity, right? A football that's at rest, its velocity is zero. And I go kick it, its velocity is very high right now. So its velocity changed, right? Or there's a bike, it's at rest, I go start it, and I like turn the accelerator, its speed increases. Its velocity is changing. The direction, velocity, all of these things are changing so many times in the real world. What is causing this? Why do objects change their velocity? Why? Now to answer this why question, why do objects change their velocity? We made up a story. A story is that there is this thing called force. And when this force thing acts on a body outside, it pushes it or pulls it. That's when objects change their velocity. The object, anything, cannot change its velocity by itself. But when an external outside force is pushing it or pulling it, it will change its velocity. That's what we made up. So what is this force thing then? That, the thing that pushes or pulls. So if there's a football, the kick you give, that's the force thing from outside that changes the velocity of the ball. But to understand this deeper, the best way to do that is to play with questions and have a question for you. The question is, there's an asteroid that's like sleeping somewhere far away in space, okay? And uh, an evil supervillain that you will see on the screen right now decides to push that asteroid towards the Earth. And he is super powerful, so he starts to push it and push it and push it. The asteroid was sleeping. It was at rest, far away from anything else in deep space. It was, its velocity was zero. Now, as the supervillain is pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, what do you think is going to happen to its velocity as he's pushing it? Think about that question. Now what will happen, observe, as the villain is pushing the asteroid, its, its velocity was zero, it'll become one, it'll become two, it'll become three. Because at every point, as he pushes it, right, he's increasing, he's making it go faster and faster and faster. That's what's gonna happen. And that's because when a force is applied to a body, its velocity changes, its velocity increases in the direction in which that force is being applied. It makes sense, right, you kick a ball, the velocity increases in the direction you kicked it. So he's pushing it, the velocity is increasing, 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 and let's say after a point, he finally lets it go, right? He's not pushing it anymore. How much of his force is still acting on that asteroid? Did you think about that question? Now, is some of his force acting on it? Is all of his force still acting on it? Or is none of it acting on it? Now, I've seen that it's very tempting to say that, Hey, yeah, you kept pushing the, the asteroid, so some of your force is now stored in that asteroid. It has this extra speed now. It's going at some 100 kilometers per hour now. So of course your force is still acting on the asteroid, right? But that's not the case. As you're pushing the asteroid, as you're pushing it, as he's pushing it, he's applying a force on the asteroid, right? So the asteroid speed is increasing, 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 increasing. It reaches 100 kilometers per hour, let's say. And then the moment he stops pushing it, the moment it's left his hands, there's no, there's no force on it. Which means that there is zero force from the super villain that we have acting on the asteroid the moment he leaves it. Zero. Absolute zero. Not later. Not after a few seconds. The moment he stops pushing it, there's zero force acting on the asteroid. Think about this. Convince yourself. Right? Because it's really tempting to feel like there's some force still left behind, kind of stored in that asteroid. No! It's zero. Because is there anybody pushing the asteroid now? Zero people pushing the asteroid. So the force on it is zero. But now the question, what will happen to the speed of this asteroid after he has stopped pushing it? He's now watching proudly as the asteroid is going towards the Earth at a really high speed. Yeah, 100 kilometers per hour is okay. We'll, we'll make that speed. Imagine that speed is much higher. He's watching proudly as that's happening. Now, what is happening to the speed of that asteroid? Will it slowly go down and become zero? Will it slowly go down 
to become whatever speed it had before he started pushing, which in this case was zero? Or will it keep going at the same speed forever and ever and ever and ever and ever? Did you think about that question? Yeah. You might have been tempted once again to think, yeah, yeah, an object that's left to itself will slow down and stop. But that's exactly what you disproved in the previous episode, right? An object left to itself, this asteroid, will keep going forever and ever and ever because there's no external push or pull. Nobody from outside pushing it or pulling it. So if it had 100 kilometers per hour when our villain left it, it'll keep going at that speed, in that same direction. But there's a problem now. The problem is, it's coming towards the Earth and half of the Earth might die if this asteroid hits us. So we have to go and save the Earth, which is typically something that we all seem to want to do, right? We want to save the Earth whenever possible. So how do you do that? We send our superhero over here uh, towards the asteroid, super strong guy as you can see, and he's going to go and uh, try and push the asteroid in the other direction. Right? It's coming towards, he's going to push it in the other direction. What do you think is going to happen to the speed of this asteroid? Did you think about it? Is it going to slow down and slow down and stop? Is it going to slow down and slow down but never stop? Or what's going to happen? Yeah, as the asteroid is coming with a very high speed, say 100 kilometers per hour, as this person, our hero is trying to push it in the other direction, what is he doing? He's applying a force that's going opposite to the direction of the velocity, right? It's coming towards you, you're pushing against it. And the more he's doing that, as he's pushing, the velocity will keep decreasing from 100 to 99 to 98 to 97. The object, the asteroid is slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. So will it ever stop though? Yes, it will stop. It will stop just the way if you skid like something, if you throw something on a floor, it eventually stops. It had a velocity when it started, but then it slowly stopped because there was a force acting opposite to it. For the same reason, this asteroid will stop. Now I have another question for you. If he continues, if he doesn't stop pushing it, right? If he's continuously doing it, what will happen to the body, to the asteroid after it stops? What is Hulk going to do to it? Will it start going back in the other direction? Yes, it will, right? It's going to become 100, 99, 98, whatever, all the way till zero. And then if he continues to push, it's going to start going in the other direction and the speed is going to keep increasing as long as he is pushing it. Right? Back to 0, 1, 2, 3, but in the opposite direction. As long as he's pushing it and once he leaves it, he's not applying any force on it anymore. So whatever speed it had, if he pushed it back to 200 this time, it's going to go back all the way at a speed of 200 forever and ever and ever, never changing. Great. So pat yourself on the back. You put a lot of effort and focus to actually understand what does cause change in motion? What makes objects change their velocity? And the answer is force, right? Now, whenever an object has some velocity going at somewhere, whether its speed changes, goes faster, or its direction changes, we say that the body's velocity is changing. And whenever velocity changes, we have another word for it. We say that the body is accelerating. It's not a very uncommon word, okay? You take a bike, you're, you're accelerating, right? And you do it more, you're accelerating even faster. Your velocity is changing, right? The one thing you may not be familiar with is that even when direction changes, we say the body is accelerating. The bike is accelerating, even if it's turning at 40 kilometers per hour, constant speed, but it's going around a circle. So the essential thing you've learned here in this episode is that objects don't change their velocity, rather can't change their velocity on their own, but forces from outside External forces can make them change their velocity. But what's another word for changing their velocity? Acceleration, right? So forces from outside can accelerate bodies and they do accelerate bodies. So there's only one line you need to remember, you need to understand truly from this episode. It's forces don't cause motion. Objects don't need forces to create motion. If they have motion, they'll have it happily. Forces cause acceleration. Forces cause acceleration, in other words, a change in velocity and more the force more the acceleration. Imagine, right, I push really hard, the amount the velocity changes will be faster, right? Right? If I push slightly, then how much the velocity changes will be slower. So forces don't cause motion, they cause acceleration, and more the force, more the acceleration. Now congrats, because not only have you mastered Newton's first law, with this, with this idea about what forces do, you've already got a sneak peek into Newton's second law which is something you would have learned in much higher grades. So you're getting like an advanced sneak peek right now. Now with this, 
You know that the best way to learn anything is to actively think about it and play with the ideas. That's what you're going to do in the next few stations where there are some challenging situations that you're going to think about using what you just learned right now.